Land Manalauga, one of Iceland's biggest natural sites, and Route F208, one of Iceland's most beautiful and adventurous roads. Join one of the most spectacular day trips you can do in Iceland and travel with me to colorful mountains, surreal lava fields and through nerve-wracking water crossings. What happened in the last episodes? After circumnavigating and crossing Iceland with our motorcycles, we returned to the capital city Reykjavik for the simple reason to change our vehicles. We didn't know at that point though how good this decision had been regarding the terrain that we would meet in the next days. Today is the first day of a new adventure. As you can see, we're not on motorcycles today. We are in a car and we will drive some of the roads that we couldn't drive with motorcycles because there are some of these f roads here in the highlands that just have too high water crossings so you're not able to drive them with a motorcycle and we still want to see them so stay tuned It's very windy today and behind me you can see one of the, I think, most famous national parks of Iceland, which is this. And it's part of the so-called Golden Circle, um, the most driven route that tourists normally do. We didn't do it so far, but now we had a short stuff here. It's very early, so there were only two people besides of us. And now we continue. Tingvellir is Iceland's oldest national park and UNESCO World Heritage Site. It stretches around Tingvallavatn, Iceland's biggest lake, and you can literally walk in between two tectonic plates, the Eurasian and North American one, or even dive between them in some of the clearest waters on Earth. But the national park is also a historical important place. Since 930, Tingvellir, alias Assembly Plains, was a place where the world's oldest parliament was held under the open sky. The gatherings were held here for centuries and only in the 19th century were moved to Reykjavik. With Tingvellir National Park, we now had visited the third big site of the Golden Circle. But on this day, we definitely were on another mission than driving the Golden Circle. We wanted to do some of the most legendary adventurous and challenging Icelandic F-roads, visiting one of Iceland's most famous natural areas, Landmannalauga, with its colorful mountains. So, with a motorcycle, we would have gone straight, but with a car, we go right now, because we want to drive something different. So there are actually two ways that you can go to Landmannalauga, where we're going to, um, to see the mountains and hike. And one way is supposed to be pretty easy and you can even do it with a motorcycle. And the other way that we are taking now is supposed to be a bit more bumpy and difficult and has as well some little water crossings. And we of course decided for that one, which is actually shorter, but hey, it's much, much longer than the wood road. Here, no. Yeah. The easy road to Landmannalauga is the route F208 north of Landmannalauga. The supposedly more difficult one is F225 that we just turned on to. Inside the car today because it's so windy. 
out of butter because you need it in the cold. And cucumbers. It's really nice so far, a very moon-like landscape. But the road is much more busy than we actually thought. Um, there are quite some other people driving here and as well these bigger off-road buses that bring their tours through here. It turned out that route F225 had two bigger water crossings, but we also saw two bikers who did the route without any problems. The much more deep and difficult water crossing was actually waiting closer to Landmanna Lauga. Ah, that's a 208. Here the roads come together to Landmanna Lauga. Now the skills that we learned from our friend and guide Birkel, who we visited Askia with, came in handy. We drove not too fast, always along the lines in the curve. But this water crossing right before the campground of Landmanna Lauga, that you come to no matter which route you take before, was definitely the deepest we had done on this route so far. But we also spotted some motorcyclists on the campground, so I guess it's doable. So we arrived at Landmanna Lauga and we're doing this short hike at 5 kilometers to see the nicest thing. Uh, it's a big hiking destination. A lot of people, as you can see, they're outdoor clothes. From the Landmanna Lauga campground, you can start different kinds of hikes. From the short hike we were about to do, to a complete day hike over the ridge of the mountain, to multiple day hikes. And all hikers meet here at the campground and ranger station to get the information and plan their treks. I mean, no, that looks more like a supermarket. That's for the campers. It's cool though. Landmanna Lauga, or the People's Pools, is a unique area in the heart of Iceland's southern highlands. The dramatic region can be found nestled beside the raven black Laugaran lava field, and Landmanna Lauga itself is made up of rhyolite mountains, a rock type that creates a full spectrum of amazing colors. Historically, the region is best known for its natural geothermal baths, hence its name the People's Pools. But today most visitors come for the great trails and the beautiful colored mountains and their special atmosphere. So here behind me, you can see this super famous mountains now, and I guess this is as well one of the most beautiful parts and views here. Following the trail up a small valley and across a moraine, you come to the base of Brenni Stenzalda, which is a mountain that also offers a hike over its ridge. Also known as the Sulphur Wave, this yellow and red mountain rises before you as steaming vents surround you with eerie mist. My favorite part of the short hiking loop, which will take you under two hours to complete, was the next part of the hike, a trail through a lava field that felt mystical and outerworldly. At one point you see the mountain in front of you, Planukur, 
which is famous for its green and blue rocks, and its flanks drop into a river that winds its way down to Grenagill Canyon. Congratulations! You are nearing the end of the hike. A perfect timing to refresh yourself and get some cold water from the bubbling crystal clear river along the valley floor. We are nearly done. Nearly out of here of this little hike that we did. I think it was only five kilometers, three windy, but very, very nice, very different landscape. And um, yeah, highly recommend. Hiking done, and we're taking off from Land Manalauga, and we're going south now, um, which is the route 208 south, uh, which is supposed to have a lot of water crossings. That's why we didn't want to do it with a motorcycle, but have this car now. So we will see. I have to admit that this southern part of Route F208 was my biggest reason for this Land Manalauga trip. Because some people say that this southern part is not only much much more difficult than the easy northern part of F208, but also one of the most spectacular roads of Iceland. The area you first cross on F208 south is called Eldgia. It stretches from Landmanalauga south and is the largest volcanic canyon in the world. At 270 meters at its deepest, 600 meter at its widest and around 40 kilometers long. Also you will meet your first bigger river crossing here. The tricky thing? It's not just one, it's many. A bit like a face or something yeah, or fish. Like a dolphin. The more southern part of the route F208 will take you to the area of Skaftar Tunga, which is not very frequently traveled by tourists due to its remote location. We barely met any other traveler since we had left Landmanalauga. Once again, there are rivers to cross and you will see some of the most spectacular Icelandic scenery, which will make every single minute of the journey worth it. The highlands indeed stole our hearts.
So this is the 208 now, not F208 no more. So we're back on normal roads without water crossings. You know you have reached the end of your adventure when the road has only a normal number, is missing the stunning views from before and the first settlements appear again. Amongst them a pretty little church. So we are at a small pretty church now that pretty much marks the end of the 208 and uh, we will reach the ring room soon and then our day of offroading is over. This church is also called Grafa Kirkja, like the oldest turf church that we had visited on our way to Siglo Fjord. But it's obviously not that old, but for us it was still a nice last stop of the day and a sign that we reached civilization again after our adventure in the volcanic highlands. Our day actually ended on another high regarding our choice of hotel for this night. So we not only had an absolutely stunning day today, but we as well were super lucky because we just looked for accommodation like an hour ago. And we found this place here, it's called Magma Hotels. It's super beautiful and they of course only had a room because they got a cancellation. So we're super lucky and this is a very nice end for a very, very nice day. We really believe that this was the hotel with the most stunning view. And it was the best base to kick off our next adventure on the next day. Guys, I hope you liked our little excursion to the Icelandic highlands. Like always, give this video a thumbs up and comment. And let me know what your favorite 4x4 vehicle is. Next week we will visit a historical place on some of Iceland's most remote trails, the Lucky Craters, where one of the biggest volcanic eruptions took place in the 18th century. Tune in next Thursday to be part of the Got2Go Volcanic Travel Crew.